What's going on, you realm watchers? This is Mortar Mike, and this is another Raid Shadow. <laughs> 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 Let's do that again. <laughs> Mission failed. We'll get next time. What's going on, you realm watchers? This is Mortal Mike. It is go time. This is another Watcher of Realms video. Today, this video is all about Cyrus. I randomly pulled this guy, I think like a little bit over a week ago. Ah, what? That's it. That's dope. Oh my goodness. Out of the freaking blue. This is the video I did of a full review of the Immortal Codex. And I was breaking down ways that you can beat the bosses in the game. And lo and behold, I pulled a few um, shards at the end and out pops that guy over there. Over, wow, the finger game is not that great. There we go, that guy. Out of the freaking blue. And I haven't been happy because I think he's still underrated in how good a champion he is. When I tell you this guy brings teams together to do insane stuff. I added Cyrus to gear rate one and I could beat like the next two levels of gear rate one because of all of the benefits he gives. Let's dig into his kit. I'm gonna show you guys how I built him. So I'm gonna go into the gear. What's interesting about this guy also, I don't have the end game gear. I got pretty decent gear, pretty late game gear, but it's still reachable for people who end up getting Cyrus um, and they haven't been, you know, farming gear rate 21 on one, two and three consistently and, you know, really getting amazing pieces. This is at the pretty mid to late game, to be honest, um, as far as what I equipped on him. I built him more for damage than for defense. He has a pretty good damage output. It's not insane, but it's manageable and it's good against crowds. And so every little bit helps in those battles. My focus was to give him, you know, somewhere to like 10,000 damage. If I can get that, that's a decent amount. I mean, for a defender that's doing damage, it's not too bad. Um, his attack speed, I wanted to get a little bit up there. I wanted crit rate as close to 100 as I can get it. Crit damage is at a decent amount there. He is a stalwart champion. What do I mean by that? He is a champion that specializes above a lot of champions, honestly, at keeping, you know, at holding the line. But he puts giant AOE attacks. Let me show you the range on this thing. Let, let me just, let me just click it. I gotta click it. This is his range. That is four tiles ahead. This is on the range of like a Valkyra, of like an Ardea. Uh, I think this range outranges Zilla too, if I'm not mistaken. Let's check out Zilla at the top. That's four tiles four. She's only three tiles four. So yeah, Cyrus can hit a lot of enemies ahead of him. The cool thing about that is, let's go back to the range because this is important for you to know. In that four range tile, the first two ranges ahead of him, he puts summons down. He puts down minions that help him end the battle. Let me break down how these guys work. This is pretty dope. Yeah, you wanna know this, because if you see a Cyrus out there, just know what you're facing. It's not just a single champion. The dude has like three kits. <laughs> Let me just be real with you. He's got like three kits and what? Let's start off with the basics. His basic attack, it deals 100% AOE damage to multiple enemies in range. I don't know what multiple stands for, but I haven't seen him hit a cap and just say, oh, it's only like three or four. It's probably a lot, which is awesome. That scales to 120%. Here's where things start to get insane. Starting from his ultimate, then to the rest of his skills, then to his lowered skill, because that's when things start to get nutty. All right, ultimate. Legion of the Dead summons one skeleton fighter within two tiles ahead and increases their and the hero's damage by 150% and attack speed by 60 for 10 seconds. So this is why I built him more towards damage because if you notice, they get damage bonuses. It does not say defensive bonuses for the ultimate. Um, it's technically 100%. I scaled it to 150. The attack speed is going to go up by 100 and the cost is going to drop by another 100, making it 550. So it's almost ready when he's summoned. When he's summoned. And that gets even... <laughs> Y'all don't understand this. Let me put this together. Let me put this together. All right. Next. One thing that's really interesting about this too. There's something good to know. He summons two different types of minions. So he summons skeleton fighters. Skeleton fighters are a little on the weaker side. So it says a summon unit that possesses a few of the summoner's hero attributes, able to delay and block one enemy. The key thing to say here is it possesses a few of the summoner's hero attributes, summoner hero's attributes. You can't see it, I'm in the way, sorry, so I'm gonna read it out to you guys. Next are the skeleton warriors. 
a summon unit that possesses significant portions of the summoner hero's attribute, able to attack and to block one enemy. So I'm doing a little bit of homework on it. I'm, I'm getting the ballpark of like the skeleton being at like a 30% and a warrior being at like a 70% of stats. So it's, it's, it's been nice. Now that being said, because you're building him for damage, that means that you're not building him as much for sustainability and defense. That does not mean that he's a weak champ because he keeps summoning champions in front of him that could take damage for him and it, just, just wait, just wait, just wait, just wait. Next part, King's Wrath. When the HP of the hero summons, so that's a warrior or a fighter, is below 50%, there's no cooldown on this. Increases attack speed by 100 and damage by 40%. It started at 30, it can get to 50, and the attack speed can go from, it started at 60 and it's now at 100. It can get nutty, like that. the little minions he summons get stronger as they go to the fight. Here's something interesting though. I'm gonna try him with Lunacy Visor. I don't believe it works. I don't think the minions, the minions can't get healed by other allies. They can't get healed by healers. Um, I, so I'm going to try a Lunacy Visor to see if they can heal themselves in combat. But, that, but to be honest, I'm not building them defensively, so they're very frail. And you want them that way. Here's why. Let's get to it. It's about to get... This is where the kit comes together and you're like, what in the ham sandwich is going on here? His talent, when he immediately summons, he immediately summons one Skeleton Warrior within two tiles ahead when deployed. So when he gets put on the map, he puts down one of those um, skeleton warriors and it's ultimate, he summons more. As far as I've seen right now, I've only seen him put two down at once because it's within the two tiles ahead when deployed. So I've only seen him put down two at once. That's plenty. Let me tell you why. The Lord skill, I don't think y'all get it. This dude Lord skill is like three, three kits in one by itself. But let's get to it, let's get to it. Esoteric Synergy 3, let's break this down piece by piece. Increases faction allies' basic attributes by 15%. That's one thing. That's one thing. So that's already a good lore bonus. Every lore bonus seems to come with some kind of measurement of that. Reduces factions allies' skill costs by 25%. Esoterics are known to have high skill costs for the ultimate. He just dropped them down by a quarter, but it gets even more nutty. Here's where it gets crazier. The best part to me is this. When an ally is defeated or retreats, <laughs> increases the damage of other faction allies by 25% for eight seconds. This effect can be triggered one time every 12 seconds. Let me tell you guys two reasons why that's amazing. Let's trim it down to the ESOs over here, shall we? All of these, and I'm gonna get out the way for this part. All of these guys, or esoteric, including Raiden that I pulled the same day I pulled um, Cyrus, which is awesome. Look at the cost of these ultimates. Right now it's at 1300. It becomes 25 25% faster. Comet, the two that are rivaled for the highest damage in the game for AOE attackers for mages, 1200. That's now gonna be at about 900. And he still gets damage boosts if any of them die or is recalled. Why is retreated so, why, why is recalled and retreated so important? Laurel triggers his ultimate literally by being dropped, not ultimate, but his Lord skill, literally by being dropped in and picked back up. Now, you thought that was enough. There's a couple other champions in here. We're not gonna get too deep into it. AI, you know how fast she gets her ultimate. So um, if Laurel drops in and Laurel is picked up, AI begins to immediately just drop fully made mines. So I think they still have to be upgraded, but they're fully ready. They're not like the little portal that sits there for a while and makes them, they're fully ready. And that's because he just dropped her in, gave extra rage to everybody and pulled her back out. But there's another reason why this is insane. I didn't mention this earlier. I'm gonna show the ults so you can see them. You know those skeleton warriors? They count as actual allies. They don't take up your cost of enemies to put down, so they don't take up your count. If there's two skeletons of allies, they don't take up two slots of your champions that you can summon, but they trigger his ultimate also. So if they die, not ultimate, I keep saying ultimate because it's that freaking powerful. If they die, this Laurel skill turns right back on. So if Laurel comes in and gets pulled back, every one of them gets a 25% damage boost. So you just gave them all the rage to do their ultimate and then a 25% damage boost on top of that. That's with Laurel. With him, he's already sending out two of these guys. And chances are they're gonna die fairly quickly. 
that means 25% damage is consistently happening, along with them getting the skill cost reduced by 25% and getting another 15% added to their freaking kit of, of, of basic stats. Like how insane is that? Do you realize how much that actually changes when you're playing this content? It changes, it changed my gear rate one so much, I had to get used to using him because they were attacking so freaking often. I'm gonna do a run for you guys so you guys can see it. And here's the thing, I still don't have the end game gear in all of my champions. So that shows you how important this guy is to the team, how valuable he is, how much he's changing things up. So. What artifact did I give him? I'm testing this out because I don't know if it works the way that I expect it to, but that's why we test it out. Tuning Crystal, after every 10 basic attacks landed, deals AOE physical damage one time equal to 210% of the damage multiplier. Damage multiplier, defender that does damage. It's the same thing that I have on my boy Azor. That's what I like too. Um, he does 200% damage multiplier to at most five targets and restores HP for 12% of damage dealt. So I thought this was interesting because I want to see if that means every 10 basic attacks attempted or 10 basic hits landed. I'm willing to bet it's 10 basic hits landed. If that's the case, he can heal himself, which he doesn't necessarily have to do because most of the times the enemies can't get to him unless it's in the same mob. But if he has in the same mob, he has this attack that hits four tiles ahead of him. So <laughs> you see why this guy is so freaking nutty? He's crazy, he's great. Now let's look into the Awakens. This may take some while, so I'm, pro I'm probably gonna rely on the legendary soul stones from like the gear, or like the guild boss or whatnot. That's probably the only way I'm expecting to level this guy up. I'll be honest. When summon uh, skeleton fighters, there's a 25% chance to summon skeleton warriors. So skeleton warriors is an upgrade. So when his ultimate, he summons the fighter, um, there's a chance to put the warrior in, which has significantly better stats than the skeleton fighter. So. It's nice to have, it's good to have, it's good tweaking to the kit. Now he's a Lord, so I'm gonna tell you this, Lords get better upgrades in two to four Awaken than most other champions do. So you get better bonuses, benefits and parts right here. His faction allies penetration is increased by 5%. So that's even more damage that his champions around him can do. When I say he commands them to do damage, it is nutty. Awaken three, summons one extra skeleton fighter when deployed. So he gets summoned, as soon as he drops, he has two of them ready. So imagine him dropping, two of them are ready, one of them dies, boom, you get a 25% damage boost from every esoteric on the field. That's probably why I'm sure he's a 5.0 in the ratings um, for this guy. I'm sure of it. Like, I don't even have to check it. I'm confident he's a 5.0. He's gotta be. Awaken 4, Rage Regen plus one auto. Auto is important. Auto happens whether he's attacking or not. The other version of Rage Regen is important if you're hitting and being hit. That's when the other Rage Regen goes up. Rage Regen Auto is just them sitting, it just goes up regardless. So that's one of the better ones to have. Unless you're in a really, really hectic fight, that's why I think somebody like an Azor does insane. So he doesn't need Rage Regen Auto because he's hitting so many champ so many enemies at once. It's freaking nice, especially his ult. It's, it's, it's bonkers. You should really see him in, get, um, in a Mortal Code that's one against the Conqueror, against um, Cyrus. <laughs> Awaken five, upon death or retreat, summons one skeleton fighter. Why is that good? Because when he dies or is called back, it does the same thing that Laurel does when she dies or is called back. It gives the bonus to everybody else on the team. And when I tell you the cooldown of 12 seconds is short, because you're normally playing the game at 2X or the game is running at like 3.5x speed, that time passes by so fast while you're playing, you don't notice that cooldown is like, oh, it's major, no. As fast as you're getting ults back, as fast as you're getting abilities back, as much as the buff as you're getting, it is freaking madness. Think of the combinations you could put together as a team with this guy. That means that Ezrin, just so you see it, I can't talk clearly when he's talking on top of me, it feels weird because I'm hearing a voice. 550 gets even lower. That's his ultimate with the super strong healing. Um, and don't forget, you can also add that with E, it's this one, no, that's, that's part of it, but Redemption and Agony where he can range, he can heal anybody on the map beyond his attack range. So he's getting that even more often. That's making Ezrin a better healer. <laughs> Champs like to sow me. Do not look, uh, I say this enough in my videos, I hope you guys really grasp this. Don't look at the Somi as a full healer. The Somi is a support character. In chaotic teams, she's a healer, sure. But in this team, she's a support team. She, she gets rid of debuffs, 
faster than any other, I keep saying she, he gets rid of debuffs faster than any other champion in the game that I know of. And I really do mean that. Magic Instance is slept on. Look it up yourself. I'm not gonna get into it right now, but it's a six percent, it's a six second landing. It can go for 12 seconds. And the ultimate, he could do three at once of tossing them. So it's, it's madness. That's awesome. AI. The ice wolf AI the has train. a notoriously short um, build up for her ultimate, which I freaking love that you can drop it down from 800 to 600. She's getting this at like a four, at 450. And then she's throwing straight, fully made crystal bombs. Fully made for 25 seconds. And then if you have any rage regen, they can build their rage in the background. I learned that. I didn't know if that was a thing that was happening, but I use Hollow very often. Hollow isn't an Exoterra. I think she's a, she a cultist, I think. Even blood. That boy, yeah, he's, she's a cultist. She can build rage in the background and they already have decreased costs. So they really, I've literally had a moment where I had a Boreas, a Boreas that did his ultimate, and as soon as he finished it, he was at like 80-something percent to do it again, just with the team that I had. I think I had Laurel involved in there also. But like, that's insane to realize you have that much damage going out. Let's put this guy in action. Oh, before I do that, we gotta check the ratings. I gotta see if I was right about what I said. Look at that. They put a Mortal Codex on the list too. A Mortal Codex, Gold Raid, EXP Raid, Faction Trials, Gear Raid 2. Tide, Gear Raid 1, Void Rift, Guild War, Artifact Material Raid. It doesn't drop off until the last little parts here in Arena. And I do agree that Arena and like Guild Boss aren't really the ideal places. Guild Boss could be, honestly, it really could be. Um, but these areas where you fall off because his cost is still, I believe it was at 25. His cost is pretty high. His cost is 25. So he's typically not the first champion you're gonna be putting down. You're gonna start your defenses first and you're gonna put him in because he's gonna light up everything around you. Single target DPS, I disagree with that because he's blocking away with a whole bunch of these warriors. Um, I guess because of the fact that he can be killed to an extent. Oh, oh, I don't, I don't know if I showed that. Did I show you these guys? The skill, right here. Lord of the Undead, I think I missed this one. Sorry, sorry if I did. 50% of incoming damage will be absorbed by the hero's summons. They go to his summons, they don't go to him. He, they get the damage instead. And that can be boosted up, um, it was at 40, it can be boosted to 60%. Um, so that means they're gonna be intentionally die more often, which procs the ultimates. And it means he can do more damage too, so that's why I build him for damage. When the hero receives a fatal damage, one of the summons will be sacrificed to resist the damage. So here's how that plays out. There are some instances, I probably wouldn't recommend doing this because it's probably the way it's gonna get really goofy. Um, but there may be some instances where you can have him blockading something and have him aim in a different direction and summon summon over there. And so he just becomes another tank that just absorbs a whole bunch of damage. So that's, mm, that may not be an ideal strat, but it's cool to have a champion you can start thinking of things like that. He has four tiles of hit damage ahead. That means he can hit other lanes and help out. It's freaking nice. I'm sorry, I missed that. I forgot to mention that before. Yeah, he can't die until all of his minions die first. So you find a way to keep his minions from taking immediate damage, he becomes more tanky because of that. And then you could just keep healing him. So just putting that out there. Just thought I'd mention that. All right, let's try this guy out. The main place I wanted to show that I've seen the most success is in Gear Raid 1. You guys saw the full list, but I've already completed Void Rift. Um, I haven't built around him for Guild Boss as much. Getting into this here, Gear Raid 1. Oh, Gear Raid 2 is where we're getting bonuses now. Gear Raid 1, 20. Just doing this one because I haven't tried 21 yet. Um, the good thing is the difference of BP isn't that high. So there's a chance I probably could beat it this week when they rotate back to doing this content. I'm gonna do an auto fight. First time I'm gonna turn off power diamonds. How do you turn it off? Right here. Right here, right? I thought there's a way that you press a button and it goes off. Maybe I'm I'm screwing myself over here, aren't I? Is that it? There we go. So I'm gonna risk it. I'm turning off power dominance. I'm gonna let this thing run. It's still gonna be at three times. I can't really change that. I wish I could slow it down for you guys to see it. But I'll do some pauses in the replay so you guys can see how it's working, if that makes sense in here. But I'll make sure this thing works out for you guys. I'm gonna point it out as it goes. You're just gonna see how many times this guy's abilities comes to benefit the team. I'm gonna move over here. 
All right, I got Moraes and Dolores out there. I put my man, um, let's go ahead and pause it here. I started it off. I put Abomination from the, from the right side facing left. I learned that was a really cool way to keep getting rapid attacks on the enemies in the middle. I think Power of Dominance turned right back on. I'm pretty sure I just uh, disabled it. But uh, yeah, <laughs> I guess it's back on. So we're gonna watch that version instead. But um, I also put Maul in the background because Maul works really well with Boreas as far as doing extra damage. Oh, Boreas doing extra damage to targets that are frozen and Maul does a really good job of keeping them frozen with his alt. So back to the match. I put him in a little further towards the, um, further into the match, but you already see Boreas is doing crazy damage. Hollow is in there giving all the rage regen back to the champs. Here's the next group. Here's where I start to bring Ezrin in. I put Ezrin here. I put Ezrin here in particular because I wanted to get two healers on Abomination. There were times where if you have an Abomination and you get to the higher levels, he still can die. And it's tough to keep him alive without having a good healer on him. So I just put the second healer in range for him because most of my damage dealers are just on one side, which makes sense for as you get in the higher gear raids. So we saw I just did my freeze here. And they do a pretty good amount of damage here, which works well. I did have an issue though. Boreas would die a lot. But it was because I just was um, like, my damage wasn't going out fast enough and it started to cost me. If you see right here, I put Cerberus in the middle because Cerberus is the great toilet flush for this game mode. He just cleans everything up. It's really awesome. You can just see it. Even with power dominance off, it's still incredible. And there he is. At the top, I have Comet on the other side. If I had more space on the right side, I put Comet right next to Dolores. But Boreas next to Dolores is really good. So he's been doing heavy damage. But if you already noticed, if you look up, if you look above Cyrus, I don't think my mouse shows up here. No, if you look above Cyrus, you already see one of his minions on the field. If he does his ultimate, I think he only could do one minion here because it's a two tile distance and that's the second tile. The first one is a wall, so you can't just put him in a wall. Uh, but it does insane damage. Let's get back into the fight. So look at the minion, he just, he just died. I put another one out there, barely has any health. As soon as he dies, everybody gets a buff. I'm not sure there's an icon that pops up for it, but it is insane. Oh, the little damage boost for Dolores on the right, but Every time you see one of his minions dies, or every time you see Laura get picked up, know that there's a high chance they're getting the boost then. Because the cooldown is so short, you really don't notice it or say, oh, it's happening too slowly. It's pretty often. And they just clean up freaking shop. They just clean up. I think I saved Cerberus for the end here. But um, yeah, I like to have two heals on Abomination. But you watch his ultimate, he just sent a minion out. You see he has, uh, and the minion just died, which would be all of them about to do extra damage. Extra damage. Oh, he's getting extra heals. Okay. Well, it looks like every 10 attacks instead of every 10 hits landed. And that's fine. Every time I pop the ult, I send one guy out there and he just does work. Yeah, you see how much damage Abomination is taking per hit? If he gets hit like that twice without having a good healer on there, he, there's a good chance he could die off. So, good to know. You see, even the little minions getting his hits in. This part's a slower part for me here. I don't get fast damage on this part, but it's reliable. I could drop Laurel in and out here, here as much as I wanted to and just get extra damage boost to expedite it. Of course, that's the power of Dominus run. Everybody sees that and says, oh, but it's a cheesy way. But look, you had to beat it without power of Dominus. <laughs> You don't start with that. That's only at the, ooh, three. That's only after you've proven that what you put together works. So, I had to show that to you guys so you can see just how quickly a ridic, ooh, really? How ridiculously he helps the team in doing extra damage. And none of them have really crazy gear on. Most of my champions top out at like 60K. At the most of them, if they even reach that. I think my beret has just got into the 60K range. He might even still be in the 50. I'll be honest with you. I'm still working on the right gear. Ooh, okay. I wish I could level that up like right now from here. I want to lock it because I know that's going to be useful. That was the main place I really think that he's amazing in. I think he's also good, like I said before, in the Void Rift. If you want to check out the reviews of where people have already used him. Immortal Codex, it's funny that people put a 5.0 in Immortal Codex already because he's only been out for like very, very, a very short window. <laughs> 
But people are like, he's amazing there. And I'm pretty sure they're talking about that first boss where there's so many waves of enemies and he just sends his minions out and it boosts up your esoterics. Now here's the challenge with that, I'll be honest. The challenge with that is that there aren't as many ground units for esoterics, but he is a lord that brings a ton of buffs to you guys. So it's still a good wager to say, hey, put this guy in here and see how he works. Look at the ratings. Best damage dealer tank in the game. That's the first one. 82 people agree with that. Amazing damage, attack percentage, crit rate, and damage attack speed. Nobody's saying build him tanky. Everybody's saying build him for damage because he keeps getting boosts and he gives boosts to his minions and he gives boosts to anybody in his factions and he reduces the cost for the, like, it's, it's crazy. Low rage cost, best summoner. And of course, there's stuff that you have like in Russian here, insane monster, a beast of a tank, massive range, great summons. That's probably saying cost. That's probably says he um, puts out two monsters at once. I don't know the Russian ones as well. Free to play and got this guy. <laughs> Ooh, dead by player. I'm gonna check him out. I'll probably end up adding him in. So he's making some content for this game. I'll watch his stuff online. Top tier tank with great damage. Somebody said he's just okay. That's when you know they haven't built that champ. Ain't no way you're gonna see a champ that does all this stuff for your team and just say, oh, yeah, he, he's all right. Oh, Shinny, more clan boss damage than Abomination. Now, I would agree on that because not only does he do damage, but he gives the ability for your allies to do way more damage. First, they get their stats increased, then they do additional damage as he's out there because all the minions are dying or you just recall a Laurel. So. Yeah, I, I, I disagree with he's just okay. More clan boss and abomination, I can understand that. Top defender makes artifact 18 with Salazar easy. That's insane. No way, I just got him. He's sick OP WTR. Nice summons, great. This guy's a wonderful attacker. Uh, last one we look at right here. Incredible potential with Comet and Gear 8 1. I think that's in, is that in Spanish? I think so. Yeah, say hello to my little friend. <laughs> Comet's daddy. So see, okay, I might have to put him in the daddy role. Boreas might have to stay in the uncle role, but I, I would definitely say that um, Cyrus would be in the daddy role for this right here. Yeah, yeah. That was my recap on the champion Cyrus. I really thought that it was important to go over the kit so that you guys had an understanding of how he works. All of the stuff that he does, he's essentially like a Dolores in the sense that when you get a Dolores added to your team, the possibilities of stuff you can do are insane. The difference is he's faction specific, so it has to be esoteric. So that is a little bit of a trade off there. The rate that he gives you the ability to one, make your rage a lot shorter, a 25% discount on your abilities to happen faster, that's one. Then he consistently is giving you more opportunities to do a ton of damage because you can drop laurels in and out or his minions can die. He just keeps giving 25% damage to everybody along with the 15% basic stat increase. I mean, like the list of stuff this guy can do is insane. So if you end up getting him, I promise you, he is revolutionary for any content that you put him in. He is amazing. You guys saw how many 5.0s this man has on his, on his account, on his own ratings. That's a lot. That's a lot. He has a few below that, only like five or so people don't agree with. Anti-air, I agree, because he can't hit anything. Gear rate three, I understand, because he can't really hit anything. He can't do enough damage in the center lane to drop the ball. So I get that, I agree on that. Gil boss. I have a little bit of a maybe with that. I don't think he's good. Like they said, he does more damage than Abomination. But that's not just him. That's what he allows to happen. And that damage boost isn't something that you have to compare with having a damage boost with like Dolores or something. It adds with that kind of damage boost. So it's even better. Freaking nice. AOE DPS, I get it. But at the same point, he's still a 3.9 out of 5. So some people are still finding good value in him. And like we said before, single target DPS, I think he should be like a 4.5 to be fair. Um, because there's so many things you can do with him, but the downside is that brings him to a 4.2, which I understand is his cost is still 25. It's a lot in one champion, so it's understandable why it costs so much to make this champion happen in the game. Oh, and tomorrow, it's right now it's the Saturday, the Saturday the 6th. Tomorrow, I want you to stay tuned on Fastidious channel because we're gonna be doing a live stream and I'm gonna be showing up on there and having a dope time. I think he said he's gonna do more of a marathon, but I wanna show up for a little window there and have a good time. I hope to see you guys there. Have your questions or your comments ready. I'm looking forward to doing it. And I'm gonna do the next announcement as well. On Monday, your boy Mortar Mike is also doing a collaboration of two videos with Ivy Lee 
Gaming. If you haven't heard it from her, you heard it here first. I'm freaking hyped and excited because we are tackling the Immortal Codex. We're gonna talk about champions that went from hate to great, champions that people overlooked until the Mortal Codex came. Now they're amazing champions, so if you have them in your catalog, I suggest you build them so you can get great results. And I'm gonna be specializing in talking about champions and artifact combos. What mythical artifacts, primarily mythical, are great champions to combo with these artifacts and put them into the game and kick butt? Because some of them are way better than we give them credit for, but you don't know unless you test them. And so your board border mic is here to do that. Y'all have an awesome time, it's go time, but now it's time to go. Y'all like how I did that? I'm getting better with these, I'm getting better, I'm working, I'm working. Y'all have a good time, y'all take care, I'll see you guys soon.